Sound Theatre Company acknowledges the spiritual and cultural ties of the Coast Salish people to these indigenous lands. We unite as the stakeholders of the 1855 Treaty of Point Elliot, which recognizes the sovereign right of tribes to defend and sustain those ancestral relationships for the benefit of all. Thank you for joining us. Oh, hi. Oh, hey then. <clears throat> Please allow me to introduce myself I'm a man of wealth and taste I've been around for a long, long time ago oh! I, Coyote, was not ask to acknowledge the first people of this land, and therefore I will not. Instead, I acknowledge the land itself, our mother. I am Coyote, Spilie. I am the trickster. I'm from the other side of the mountains, but I get around with my stories. Lots of good snagging by the salt water, am I right? Ew. Now, I know most of you do not speak Canis Latrans, so I will translate. We acknowledge and thank Mother Earth who gave life to us and all our relatives. To the spirits of the ancients living in the rocks and water, to the animal nations and the plant nations and the human nations, to the Atsit Talbith, the first people of this land who tell the story of how this place came to be and how to live here in a good way. We acknowledge the sovereign power of Mother Earth and join all her children in giving thanks to her. But. I know why you're all here, to hear me, Coyote, the trickster. I know what people say about me. I might exaggerate a little. Coyote's a liar. He's a cheat. He's greedy. He's nasty. Coyote is selfish. Oh, you don't know me as well as you think. Now you'll get a chance to hear my side of the story. So relax and prepare to be pleasured by the world's sexiest storyteller. Yay! So, the Snicksclalem story begins on a long ago beach in the years following the Spalach, the great overturning of the canoe. Coyote, I knew that was you howling around the beach. What brings you to this side of the mountains telling my story? Moon, Hyas, Dukwibuff, Star Baby, Changer, am I glad to see my old buddy you? So you can help me tell our story. By the way, it's been days. I'm starving. Got any food on you? Food is all around you, Coyote. 
I made this world so humans could live in abundance, just like you did on the other side of the mountains. You just have to know where to look. I know that. I got homies over here too, you know. Lots of people from the other side of the mountains come over here. We trade, we work, we hunt, we snag. You know, life. We got Yakima in Seattle, Okanagan and Tacoma, Spokane Indians in Bellingham. And wherever my homies go, they take my stories with them. Coyote, you and I were given the same work to get the world ready for the ones to come. Our old stories are the teachings on how to live with our relatives in a good way. If the stories are not told, the salmon people will be unable to return to their homes upriver. That's right. The boss saw leadership potential in me from the start. I made rivers by dragging big-ass logs behind me, and I brought salmon to each river. I even tried out to be the moon, but I wasn't cut out for it. A little boring, if you ask me. It's just sitting up in the sky every night. Speaking of which, why are you down here instead of up there? The sky world hears stories of those beings who come here to undo my work. I return in every age to witness the earth world following my teachings. But I'm here today because Brother Raven tells us that powerful winds are transforming the world. I know who you're talking about. Stick Indians. Hey, what have you got in that big bag you're carrying? Any edibles for a poor hungry old friend? I don't think I have the kind of edibles you're referring to, Coyote. But I also didn't mean to interrupt your storytelling. I believe you were about to tell the story of that day on the beach at Elwha when... When we ate the best huckleberry pie in the world. The pie was spectacular, but that's not why I enjoy telling this story. Perhaps I should help you to tell it, to make sure that nothing important is left out. No offense, Dukwe Buff, but I've been told I'm probably the best storyteller of all time. And... A lot of people know my stories, not to mention the best people. Hmm. Let's begin again. As Coyote said, this Nuxclayum story begins on a long-ago beach in the years following the Spalach, the great overturning of the canoe of our culture. Allow me to introduce a Sklalem elder, Sonny Burns, and his grandchild, Johnny, working up an appetite digging clams on the beach near the mouth of the Elwha River. And looking forward to lunch. Can I get a story, Pop Pop? You bet, kid. With he ki A long time ago. The first people of this land were always afraid, always hiding in the shadows and looking over our shoulders. The people of this land lived lives of fear. What we feared were those men from the northern tribes in their big war canoes. These men came without warning and attacked without mercy, burning our villages and stealing our people to take back to the north the slaves. This is why the people lived in fear. There was a young woman in one of these villages who thought, My people should not be afraid. They should not always be in fear. And so that night before sleep, She prayed for guidance. Ancestors, I'm afraid and I need help. My people live in fear and we don't know what to do. The young woman slept and had a dream. In her dream, the stinging nettle plant came and spoke to her. The plant said, Have your people gather my leaves and make a tea. Tell them to drink the tea together, and as they drink the tea, to say these words together. I will be strong for my ancestors. I will be strong for my people. I will be strong for the ones to come. The young woman woke and told the people her dream and the words of the nettle plant. 
The people followed the dream. They gathered the leaves and made a tea, drinking it together while saying the words, I will be strong for my ancestors. I will be strong for my people. I will be strong for the ones to come. And the people felt a little stronger. The young woman had another dream, and the stinging nettle plant spoke to her again. It said, Have your strongest men and women warriors. Take my whole body, my stalk, my branches, my leaves, and have them flog themselves with me. As the people feel my power entering their bodies, they must say the words. I will be strong for my ancestors. I will be strong for my people. I will be strong for the ones to come. The woman woke and shared her dream. And once again, the people followed the dream. The strongest warriors whipped themselves with nettle. And as they felt the power of the plant enter into their bodies, they said the words, I will be strong for my ancestors. I will be strong for my people. I will be strong for the ones to come. And the people felt stronger still. One day, word arrived. Those men in their great canoes were coming. They were heading towards the village. But this time, the people did not run and hide in the forest as they had so many times before. Instead, the people gathered on the beach. Men, women, children, elders, everyone. The people stood shoulder to shoulder in one long line, ready and waiting as they watched the horizon for the invaders. When those canoes appeared, the men in the canoes saw the people standing on the beach, standing strong. As the war canoes got closer, the people on the beach joined their voices together into one. Come on, connect. We, we will, will be strong, strong for our ancestors. ancestors. We, we will, will be strong for our people. people. We, we will, will be strong for the ones to come. come. When the men in those canoes saw these squalamed, these strong people, standing shoulder to shoulder, not afraid, and heard their voices carry over the water as one, they knew this village would not be easy to defeat. And so they turned their canoes and went back to the north, leaving our people safe and our villages unharmed and that is all how stinging nettle saved the people well thanks for helping me to tell it you're a good storyteller see huh first time i heard that story was back in the city my third grade teacher mrs huntington invited indian storytellers to our school way before the state required it she wasn't indian but she knew these things were important for everyone to learn. All the first graders know that story now. Well, that's why you're my teacher now, Johnny. And why I know to call you Inek, grandchild. You learned in preschool and taught me. Well, oopsin. I'm hungry for that huckleberry pie. <laughs> Oh! Oh, this story is making me hungry. And this huckleberry pie is where we come into the story. Right, Dookly Buff? Patience, Coyote. We're almost to that part of the story. Wow, I guess you're hungry. I'm hungry, too. Let's sit and see what your grandma sent. Mmm. Smoke salmon. Nah. 
Pickled beach grass. Nah. Huckleberry pie. Mmm. Huh? And a certain somebody's favorite treat. Salal berry fruit leather. <sighs> your old knees are killing me. Grandma told me if you complain about your knees hurting, I should flog them with nettle. I see nettles growing right here, Grandpa. Look, I know how to pick them without getting stung. Grandma showed me that, too. Ouch! Did she now? Well, I won't be needing that, Johnny. Leave the nettles be. My knees are fine. I'm going to have my salmon with bread. Want yours on crackers, Johnny? We will be strong for our ancestors. Ow! Ouch! I told you I don't need a nettle flogging. We'll be strong for our people. Ouch! We'll be strong for the ones to come. Ow! That's enough. I'm strong. I'm strong now. (laughs) (laughs) Don't let me interrupt you, good people. I love stories. And I've inspired quite a few stories, too, in my day. Right, Duquiba? Who is your friend, Coyote? Allow me to introduce you to one of my closest friends. Ta-da! Duquiba, Hayas, Snowquall, the Changer. Swanit Duquiba. Come down from the Sky World to visit, have you? Not to visit, to see how the people are doing. Much has changed in this world, changes I could not have foreseen. Coyote, when I met you yesterday, I did not foresee that Just one day later, we'd know each other's favorite foods. Foods I have never tasted before. Same here, Changer. It gets kind of lonely sometimes, being the only trickster around. Changing the world and protecting people, it's a pretty heavy gig. Not many people get the lifestyle. But you and me. Making the world ready for the ones to come is not a lifestyle, Coyote. But it is a heavy gig, as you say. Well, Changer... A lot has changed in my lifetime. Things must look mighty different to you. Hell, this beach we're standing on was just a little baby sand spit when I first came home. The dams had finally come down and the beach was just coming back. Just enough to host our friends during tribal canoe journeys. Now look at it. Last summer, we hosted over a thousand canoes with beach to spare. Coyote has told me about the time of the dams. It's just as well I missed that part of the story, because intentionally blocking a river, stopping the flow of life, and hurting the salmon people might have made me turn every last one of the... Traumatizers. ...into rocks. Traumatizers? You mean white people? I like Coyote's name for the ones who do not consider the world they leave for their children. In our every deliberation, we must consider the impact of our decision on the next seven generations. Dukwibach, Coyote, please do us the honor of sharing our meal. We have more than enough. My wife's people are fisherwomen and men from way back, and she runs the kitchen here. Cleo's incapable of preparing a meal for less than a longhouse. <gasps> Smoked salmon is my favorite. Oh. <laughs> Your hospitality to weary travelers from the sky world is welcome, Siam. And I am very pleased to try this huckleberry pie that Coyote speaks of so fondly. He's been leading me on quite the food adventure. Uh. Tacos with salsa? Hoo-hoo! They're an experience I won't soon forget. And this is my grandchild, Johnny. Johnny Burns is learning to tell the stories of our people. And I'm happy to say they are my teacher, teaching me things I did not learn when I was away from here. Johnny, it is good to meet you. Any questions, kid? For the one who is known by many names, Snowquaw, the Transformer, Changer. Kiats, Hayes, Duquiba. Why so many names? Johnny, 
Do you see that mountain over there? This mountain is the mother of your river and is seen from afar by people in all four directions. The people know her by different names, yet she is the same mountain. It's the same with me, seen by different people and given many names. Have you any other questions, Johnny? Is it true you can change anybody into anything you'd like? Yes, that is my power. My work was to make the world ready for the ones to come, and not all were prepared to adapt as necessary. But even in the sky world, we've heard stories of the Nexclayan people fighting tirelessly for a hundred years to tear down the dams and keep your promise to the salmon people. Now that is a story worth remembering and telling. Tell us your story, Changer. <clears throat> I shall tell it. A long time ago, two sisters were out gathering plants, grasses, tree bark, and roots. They were weavers, and these were the materials for their work. They made a camp the night before they were to turn home. They lay down to sleep, and the younger sister pointed to the sky and said, Look at those two stars, the red one and the white one next to it. I wish we could marry those stars. We would live in the sky world in the homes of our husbands. The elder said, We must sleep now. Do not talk that way about marrying stars. When they woke up the next morning, they were in the sky world, and they were married to the stars. The older sister was married to the red star, who was a strong, tall, handsome young man. The younger sister, who made the wish, was married to the white star, and he was an old, wrinkled, and blind man. The older sister was very happy. After a time, the younger sister and her old husband had a baby. It shone like a little light, like a star. Everyone loved this little one, and they called him Star Baby because of his brilliance. The sisters worked in the sky world as they had done below. They would go out and gather plants. And when they did this, they were always told, never dig a plant that has roots that go straight into the ground. Only dig the plants that have roots that spread out. They always followed this direction. But one day they disobeyed and dug a plant with a root that went straight down. They pulled it up and made a hole in the bottom of the sky world. Through that hole, they could see their land and mountains and river far below them, and they became homesick. They wanted to go home. So they began to weave and braid a rope, and after 14 days, they made a rope that touched the earth below. They took the baby and climbed down that rope and returned to their people. Everyone was happy to see the sisters return and the star baby. But one day the dog salmon people sold the baby and took it away. Everyone looked, but no one could find the baby. All the people, the animals, and the birds looked for him, but no one could find him. Finally, Blue Jay traveled far beyond the mountains to another world beyond the crashing sky and found Star Baby. He was now a young man, and when told the story of how he was stolen from his family, he agreed to return home with Blue Jay. Now I will tell the story as what I said and did, because I was that young man. Wait, you were the star baby? Yes, I was the star baby, who became the moon. But that was later. I turned to the dog salmon people and said, I should punish you for taking me from my family when I was a baby. But because you raised me as your son and loved me, I will not punish you. I will honor you. I said, go into the water, dog salmon people. Whatever I said, people must obey. And they went into the river water and became the fish we call the dog salmon. This was my first act as Moon the Transformer. I was to change things and get the world ready for the people to come. I made my children into many kinds of trees, cedar, alder, red and white pine, maple, and many others. I made deer and beaver. I made mountains and valleys and many rivers. I made berries and many plants for food and medicine and fibers. I made the world so that humans could live in the world with all the things they needed. I gave them instructions to use these things and how to live in the world in a good way. No gossiping, no hoarding. Share your food and resources with everyone and with love and generosity. Give thanks and lift each other up. So, because of this and many other stories, the first people here have good lives. They know how to live with the earth and all other living things. 
They know how to live with one another with good hearts. Is Hoy, that is all. I've heard that story before, and I will share it whenever I tell my stories. And you must never be shy in telling my stories, whenever you can. Did I ever tell you about the time I fell in love with a star up in the sky? Or the time I lost my eyeballs and had to... Yes, I've heard many of your stories. I notice you don't seem to learn from your mistakes. You get in bigger trouble in the next story. Some people say... Who cares what people say? I call that fake news. Fake news, like when you ate the plants that gave you permanent diarrhea? <laughs> Look at the time. We should get moving. We've got a lot of stories to tell. No! We want to hear more. More! More! All right. With Hikiat. I once was traveling down a river and came to a place where there were stone walls on either side. Oh, I know this story. Then you shall help me tell it. I saw a young boy across the river and yelled to him, Hello, little boy. The little boy yelled back, Hello, little boy. I asked, What is your name? The little boy replied, What is your name? I asked, Are you copying me, little boy? Are you copying me, little boy? I told him to stop, but everything I said, he copied. I told him to stop, but everything I said, he copied. I warned him, but he would not listen. So I told him, for being disrespectful to me, you will forever be in this place. When people come down the river to this rock canyon, you will repeat everything they say. You will be echo and never leave. You will be echo and never leave. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. This young storyteller shares my teachings and makes the world ready for the ones to come. Hey! What are you people doing on my beach? You saw my sign, right? Can you read it? Private property. Oh, good afternoon, ma'am. We're just doing a little clamming. We're Lower Elwha tribal members and your neighbors. I'm Sonny Burns. And your name is? My name is Sandy Jackson. And I'm the rightful owner of this beachfront property for seven more days. I have every right to be here until the end, enjoying every last minute in the home my daddy bought and paid for. What exactly are you people doing here? Sandy, I remember your dad. Yeah, right. Retired Navy, right? He used to come out and dig clams with us sometimes. Hmm. When he passed, we sang a song for him. <laughs> Haven't seen anyone in your house for so long. We thought it was closed up for good. <laughs> ah, this is my grandchild, Johnny. Hello, sorry you're having a bad day. I'm having a bad day because I'm about to be evicted from my family home and none of it is my doing. Sandy, that land back court decision, well, you just got to live with that. Same as we had to live for a long time with court decisions not in our favor. Returning land that was illegally taken seems to be a good thing. I've asked you nicely to respect my privacy for just one more week to get off my beach even if you're going to steal it from me in a few days. It's my land until then, and you aren't listening to me. I'm calling the police right now. I got no problem with that. They'll tell you the same thing. Why is cell service so substandard here? Problem with your technology? You should switch to Iktomi TNT, lady. The worldwide spider web is where it's at. Hello, this is Sandy Jackson. I live at 22 North Beach Drive. 
I just moved into my late father's house and looked out my window and saw some Indian people wandering around my beachfront and eating their lunch. Yes. All right, whatever, Native Americans. I asked them to leave, but they won't budge. Yes. Yes. Well, I want a police officer here right away. I want these people out of here now. Goodbye. We are not nomads. We weren't wandering, you know. We're clamming. The police are on their way right now. If I were you, I'd leave now before there's trouble. Coyote, who are the police? Are they the trouble she speaks of? By police. Roxanne! She means the law, the fuzz, the man. Who do you think overturned the canoe? That's right, the law. I'm an American with rights. My property taxes fund the police, or at least they used to when the law really meant something. Who are you? You don't look like an Indian to me. Why is this one so angry? I can tell you that. It's called white privilege. Even in this day and age. Oh, here we go again. More of your racist attacks. Hold on, everyone. Everyone. Ma'am. Sonny? I got this. Step back, please. I'm Officer Dunstead of the Obama County Sheriff's Department. And that's right, ma'am. I am the law. I serve and protect the local laws and the supreme laws of our land. That means our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and our treaties. Our treaties? I didn't enter into any agreement with any Indian, and neither did my daddy. Ma'am, you need to be 100% clear. These tribal members have every right to be here by treaty right and their sovereign status. It's my sworn duty to protect their right to do so. I also gotta say, you must be new here. It's been years since I've gotten a call like this. I'm glad to see public education paying off, so I don't have to spend too much of my time away from important duties, ma'am. So this is not important? I should have known you'd take their side. Community policing isn't about taking sides, ma'am. I admit, before my training at the academy, all I knew about Indians was they seemed to have special rights. And I didn't understand why white Americans like you and I benefit from the treaties. I'm glad I know better now. And that you and I get to live here in paradise. So surely this is all just a misunderstanding. Fine. So that's how it is. That's how it is, ma'am. And just so you know, you could learn more about tribal sovereignty by visiting the community policing department at our Iktomi's original World Wide Web location. Or you could even spend some time here with your neighbor, Sonny, listening to his stories in real life pretty special opportunity to learn directly from a neighbor who fished alongside your dad. We're good, right? Yes? Sorry to leave like this, but I've got another call to get to. Seems somebody went through the garbage cans behind the Dos Amigos Taqueria last night and left a big mess. Ms. Jackson, if I may? Excuse you. Pardon me. Well, maybe it hasn't been days since I've eaten. Dumpster tacos are a modern plentiful delicacy. Well, this is not over. It can't be. I know important people. What the hell, lady? You heard the officer? Yeah, lady. You fought the law and the law won. The tribal treaty law, that is. What makes your rights more special than mine? Lady... Did you not hear one thing Officer Dunstead said? My grandma's waiting for us with taco berry pie. If we stay here all day grown-up arguing, we'll miss out. And huckleberry pie is my favorite. You wouldn't want us to miss out on my wife's huckleberry pie, Sandy. And you're welcome to join us for a slice. How do you feel about huckleberry? Ugh. I have nothing more to say to you. Is that a promise? Eat your damn pie. I'm not talking to you, you smelly dog. Hey, lady, I'm not a dog. I'm a coyote. Although, 
My mother did say I was about one sixteenth Pomeranian. Why, you foul little human! Be quiet. I am Duhuba, Pius, the changer, and I'm here to prepare the world for the ones to come. It is me who put the clams here under the sand, so people might have food, and the salmon in the rivers. It is also me who will now turn you into a rock, because you've shown that you are a truly terrible listener. You will sit here at the waterline and watch each tide roll in and out. You will see the salmon people returning every season to share the gift of life with all. After a time, plants and shellfish will grow upon you. You will be their home. And the little crabs will hide beneath you, calling you grandmother. Then you will teach others the meaning of such things. What? No! Ah, uh, this is mine! Whoa, the stories are true. Oh, oh, oh! You can't turn people into rocks. This isn't a rock, this is a boulder. Uh, changer? What have you done? She could not listen or hear. It seemed she would have it no other way. The rocks here are very old. They were born in the mountains and have been traveling back to the ocean since time immemorial, speaking their own language and living their stories. Because they are old, they can teach this rude one, this angry one, a better way to live. Grandma keeps little round rocks on the back porch. I'm not allowed to play with them. If I even touch them, Grandpa yells at me. Leave those people alone. I'm glad you didn't turn Grandpa into a rock. Sometimes P-E-S-D makes him rude and angry. Johnny. Little one, should Duke Lebuff turn your grandfather into a rock? What? No, I turn him into a rock. Grandpa is already a good listener. I see your point, little one. Duke Lebuff, can you change this old man? Into a gooey duck. No, coyote. There's no need to do that. You are wise, Johnny. Your grandfather's spirit is like this beach, growing firmer and stronger underfoot, coming back to him a little bit at a time with every tide. I have changed, and I am changing. I'm still not always the person I want to be. You should have seen me before Cleo. Cleo's dad is from here. But her mom was Ocheti Shakun. Getting hitched to Cleo meant doing things her way. No way was she going to shack up with me unless I agreed to go do time in the white buffalo calf woman re-education camp. Not another story of humans sending others to camps. Coyote has told me of his work slaying the monsters who locked up children in camps behind wire fences. Yes, I did. Were you tortured in this camp? Never gone four rounds in a sweat lodge with six men sharing their feelings? Yeah, they tortured me. (laughs) Nah, I'm just kidding. I survived learning about my feelings. Grandma calls that decolonizing. Remembering how we were before the traumatizers came here. You're looking at the world through eyes your grandfather does not have, Johnny. Tell me, what future do you see? We will be strong for our ancestors. We will be strong for our people. We will be strong for the ones to come. I'll be an artist like my dad and a lawyer like my mom. Grandma says I don't have to choose. I can do both. It appears I'm not alone in preparing the world for the ones to come. The Sklalem people have prepared this young one well. Johnny, a lawyer? And you think I'm tricky? Well, I did go to a top law school. Yeah, Trump University. Maybe you've heard of it. Pretty famous law school. I graduated Gluteus Maximus, top of my class. Ew. Changer, Coyote, go with Johnny to the longhouse. It's just a short walk down the beach here. 
compare law degrees with their mom and try a slice of the world's best huckleberry pie. Just don't get in the way of preparations for the luau. Luau? On the beach, tonight. Sea lion luau, a la Ramona Bennett. Cleo's P.S. de resistance. With everything, totally the delicious bits? Tide is out, the table is set. That's what the old people always would say. An old ways sand grub with nothing left out. Oh, my phone. It's your grandma, Johnny. Hello. Hey, let me put this on speaker. That way I got witnesses. <laughs> Johnny, you guys done climbing yet? Cleo, I'm putting this on speakerphone so I don't have to repeat things. Huh? Where are you guys at? Dinner's just about ready. Well, things got a little hectic. But I'll send Johnny and some folks there right now. What other folks? How many? We got plenty, just want to make sure we have enough plates out. Eh, they're just some folks we met here on the beach. Kind of big deal, folks. One of them has a law degree. Oh, really? Well, they're more than welcome. Johnny is bringing those special guests as we speak. Right, Johnny? You know how it is. They make friends wherever they go. Hey, everybody. Did I tell you Cleo's mom was on the first occupation of Alcatraz back in the 60s? And that Cleo organized the second occupation where the government finally kept their promises. She got a law degree, but decided to... Johnny, quit talking about me that way. I was just one of a bunch of us. Oh, all right. But it's a great story. And people should know you're kind of... Uh... Hush now, Sonny. These folks are probably starving by now, listening to us talk. Send them over, dinner served. Well, save me a plate. I'll be there in a few. I already got some sea lion and some huckleberry pie set aside for you. But I can't guarantee I can hide them from the tribal chair for very long. Get your butt in gear. Love you too, Cleopatra. I'll come over in just a little bit. Johnny's on their way. What are we waiting for? Johnny, you'll lead the way to this pie. I will lead the way. Come on, Coyote, let's move. It's right over here. Coming with us, Seahawk? Do you need some time? Hmm. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah. That will take some time. See how Chandra can change her back, right? I mean, it's not going to leave her like this forever. That's not for me to say. I will ask him. We'll catch up with the longhouse, Sonny. You know, it's funny. If Sandy stays a rock long enough, she'll become Sandy. Get it? Become Sandy? Get it? No. No? Well, how about we play a game of rock, paper, scissors? Sandy? I know what you call, and I got paper. Oh. I am a rock. I am an island. Let me sit down a minute. Oh. Whoops. I didn't mean to sit on you. Well... Doesn't this feel awkward? <laughs> this is a popular spot on the beach. Guess you'll have to get used to being a nice warm place to park our gluteus maximus, Sandy. And Changer can't be serious about leaving her like this. Oh, jeez. I'll talk to Changer. This does seem a little harsh. And for the record, I'm sorry your day turned out like this. I don't like it when I lose control of my feelings. I'm guessing you don't like it either. But hey, at least I got feelings to lose control of. I wonder if you still feel anything as a rock. <laughs> Ha! 
<laughs> what a funny day. I feel high and haven't had a drop to drink. Nope. I don't have a drinking problem. I'm not that Indian. I've never been drunk. In fact, I've never had alcohol. <laughs> not even a drop. Not even in the Marines. I swore I never would, and I never have. Now, oh, well, of course, your type never believes me. Now, my dad, he drank. And it was a problem. He was born here on the res. But he joined the Marines and moved away when he got out of high school. Met my mother when he was stationed in San Diego. They got married, moved to Seattle, and had my brother Dylan. Why am I telling you any of this? <laughs> the old Sonny didn't tell anyone anything. Not even a rock. <laughs> Man, I'm glad things changed when Johnny was born. Holding my grandbaby in my arms that day, I felt things I'd never felt before. And I knew I needed to be here for this one to come. It meant I had to stop hiding from my own feelings and start making some real changes in my life. And I knew I could do that for Johnny, because they needed me. <laughs> Turns out, I needed them. You see, I wasn't born and raised here. I'm a city boy from Seattle, but when I got out of the military, the repatriation program welcomed me back and helped with housing and employment. All these things I do now, fishing, clamming, canoeing, well, I didn't grow up learning these things, but Johnny sure is, and that's what's important, my grandchildren. The most important thing to me is to reconnect with my people and the land. I've been taking small steps, but I'm on a good path now. I like to believe that I'm a good person. I do try. Well, I know you try to be a good person too, Sandy. I can feel that even if you've got some blind spots to work on. Yep, the old Sonny didn't have a clue. He just did things. I just swallowed the pain like I was taught to do. I didn't feel a thing. Now, I go down to the river every morning and wash my face in the icy, melted snow water, just like the old stories tell us to do. The cold water helps me to feel, and my ancestors are there with me. I, I can feel that, too. I'm just trying to make peace now with all the things that happened to me back then, and be here for my family, and for myself. When your people built the dams, you blocked the river and the path of the salmon. For 100 years, we couldn't keep our promise to the salmon people. 
That terrible time made for another kind of dam. In here. Blocking feelings and stopping our spirit from completing its journey. Changer had to get the world out there ready for the people to come. My work getting it ready for the ones to come is in here, inside of my own mind and spirit. <laughs> Lady, maybe being part of a million-year-old piece of the mountain is having some kind of effect on you. Like making you wiser? I mean, you could really stand to be wiser. Hell, I could use more wisdom myself. <laughs> Maybe I should ask Tukwibach to turn me into a rock. For just a little while, eh? <laughs> to soften my heart? I promise I'll come back. With the changer. No guarantees. But he'll be in a good mood after having some of Cleo's huckleberry pie. He'll probably ask you some questions, but just speak from your heart. That's what my wife tells me anyway. But don't worry. <laughs> I'll save you some pie. Let's have a story, Anek, grandchild. A long time ago. One time, Changer saw some people talking on the beach. He listened to them and he heard them gossiping. They were talking about other people and saying things that weren't nice. So Changer said, You guys stop that. It's not good to gossip. But they said, We don't have to listen to you. They didn't know he was the changer. Sandy, please join us. The storytelling is just beginning. Have a piece of huckleberry pie. Thank you. I'm taking Officer Dunstead's advice and listening to my neighbors. I want to hear some of those stories you all talk about. Keep going, Johnny. I heard you telling the beginning. The people kept gossiping. Changer said, do not gossip is a bad thing to do. And the people said, we don't have to listen to you. We don't know you. And the people gossiped again. So Changer said, you like to gossip with your big mouths. I will make you into the thing with the biggest mouth of all. And so he turned them into a... Oh, I got to guess. Hmm. Okay. He made them into whales. Nope. Hmm. Hippopotamuses? Uh, I mean, hippopotami? Nope. That lives in Africa. Well, tell me, please. I just don't know. A clam. They have the biggest mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Clams. Of course. How could I have forgotten? Changer said, I will put you into the sand. When you open your mouth to gossip, sand and water will get in your mouth. And that is all. So, you're telling us gossiping is not good. I shouldn't talk about other people? Not unless you want to be a clam. Or a rock, right, Changer? Johnny, you told that story very well. And I should know, I was there. This is my power to change things. And it is your power as well. I see the people now are listening to the Orca grandmothers. Even Sandy here. I won't hold my time as a rock against you. The people now are working together to transform and make the world ready for the ones to come. Now I will stand back 
and watch. Changer and the Star People. My name is Casey Weinkoop. I'm a member of the Spokane Tribe, and I was the voice of Coyote. I am Roger Fernandez, Lower Elwa, Nixclam. I was the voice of the Changer. I am Johnny Pachamatla of Chippewa descent, and I am doing the voice of Sunny Pop Pop Burns. My name is Azriel Willis, Lakota and Cayuse. I play Johnny. My name is Nicole Willis. I'm Cayuse, Yakima, Nez Perce, and Oglala Lakota, and I voice the character of Sandy Jackson. My name is Fern Naomi Renville. I'm Dakota, and I am the voice of Officer Dunstead. I am Geneva Seavoy of the Sistan Wapin Sioux Tribe of South Dakota. I play Cleo. Changer in the Star People is a co-production of Sound Theatre Company and Snag Productions, adapted by Fern Naomi Renville and Roger Fernandez, with direction by Fern Naomi Renville. Produced and engineered by Malie Fujii, in collaboration with Alita Sorm, associate producer, and Gracia Leal, stage manager. Thank you for supporting Sound Theatre Company and our mission to empower artists to give voice to the dignity and diversity of the human experience, moving audiences toward a more just and compassionate world. You can find us for more at soundtheatercompany.org. Special thanks to the late Subie Bruce Miller, Skokomish tribal storyteller, teacher, artist, and cultural treasure for the Changer song. <laughs>